according to a 2012 CDC diversity inclusion audit, about half of the minorities surveyed said that they didn't feel like they were being treated fairly when it came to advancement and job promotion. Many respondents noted a belief that advancement is often based on who you know rather than what you know. You're head of a division that's responsible for fair treatment from employees. When you read those things, what goes through your mind? Before I answer that question, Andy, there's something that I think is very important for your viewers to know, and that is CDC is an equal employment opportunity agency. We take pride in the fact that we hold ourselves accountable to ensuring that the EEO laws and regulations are um, adhered to. We have over 12,000 employees in over 44 countries. And that diverse workforce is the very thing that allows us to be able to combat public health threats, not only here, but around the globe. And so we hold ourselves accountable to the rigorous standards in EEO to ensure that when decisions are made, especially in terms of promotions, et cetera, we hold ourselves accountable to the standards that the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission has set to make sure that selections and decisions made around uh, mm -hmm. EEO are fair and consistent. I get that, but when you hear and read things that minority employees are saying about treatment uh, from the CDC, what do you have to say to that? I say that we're vigilant stewards of this process. I say that we take every concern that they have seriously, that centers, institutes, and offices work diligently to follow through uh, with their respective organizations to ensure that employees' concerns are heard and that we have throughout the agency uh, opportunities for employees to get involved and engaged in resolving those types of concerns with the respective leaders. The diversity inclusion study from 2012 to 2015, 2016, the sentiment among my minorities has worsened. Why do you think it's getting worse? I can't say whether or not uh, that sentiment is... Uh, well, your own report shows it. I can say honestly that we are concerned about the results of the audit. That audit was actually prepared by the Office of Minority Health and Health Equity. One of the things that we're committed to on an ongoing basis is to use those results in working with our centers, institutes, and offices to try to correct that sentiment. I talked to probably uh, two dozen employees willing to go on camera. I talked to so many employees, we can't, even, we can't even fit them in all of our stories. Why do you think so many employees are willing to come forward to risk either losing their job or retaliation? I think when you talk about issues of race, those are very sentimental issues, very emotional issues. And I think when an employee goes through the process of uh, e EEO, and they don't necessarily get the desired outcome, that they feel very strongly about that. Do you think it's potentially because they feel that the problem is so bad that they're willing to risk their jobs because they have nothing to lose? I think it's beyond that though, Andy. It's not just about uh, fearing that they might lose their job. It's deeply personal uh, when you feel as if you've been discriminated against. That's why, again, I go back to my office and this responsibility to ensure that we hold ourselves accountable to the EEO process that's very tightly regulated and ensures that when we make decisions about who gets promoted or who gets trained or who gets paid, uh, that those decisions go through a rigorous process and analysis. Some employees blame your office, though, for not doing enough. What do you say to that? I would say that when you look at where our office is now versus four years ago, every single aspect of our office, year over year, has shown improvement. When you look at, for example, how we handle and process EEO complaints, when you look, for example, of how we handle reasonable accommodation and disability requests, and also when you look at how we handle issues around dispute mediation, year over year, our office and our staff continues to challenge itself to be better. And year over year, those numbers have gotten considerably better. What do you mean better? Because the, the diversity studies show that the sentiment has gotten worse. I can understand uh, and appreciate the sentiment, but the facts say otherwise. But the facts show in the report that the sentiment has gotten worse. So what facts are you looking at that I'm not? The fact that when you look at how my office is operating currently, for example, the issue of disability and reasonable accommodation, reasonable uh, accommodations. Reasonable accommodations is one of the most complex 
the most highly interactive and one of the most difficult EEO processes that we deal with. CDC has invested heavily in systems to ensure that when an employee has a disability and needs an accommodation, that not only do we respond in a timely manner, but that the equipment and the tools they need to be able to be productive in their job is given to them. Let's talk about that. Uh, tell me about this uh, forum that's coming up. Are all disabled employees invited, invited to participate? Not only are disabled employees invited to participate, but all employees and all managers are invited to participate as well. We have sessions that are tailored, some specifically to management, and we have some that are tailored specifically to um, the workforce that are not in management. If that's the case, then why does an itinerary show closed captioning is unavailable of the day of the forum? A lot of that has to do with logistics and our ability to be able to host different forums in different buildings. So some disabled employees will be able to participate, but not all? Some, yes. Does that make sense to you? If this is a disability discrimination forum and you're limiting those who can participate? It's not just a disability, dis, uh, disability forum, Andy. It's, an, it's a forum that's dedicated to all aspects of EEO, even beyond disability. Is, is, you're saying to me that not all disabled employees will be able to participate in an equal opportunity forum. It's the first forum that we're having. Um, we're also working with our buildings and facilities team to ensure that as we move forward that all of the uh, buildings and facilities that we um, host uh, events in do have the ability to provide closed captioning, but unfortunately we also operate in some lease facilities and we don't have that capacity at present. If you were a person that was hard of hearing and you read that, that closed captioning wasn't going to be provided, how would you feel? Of course I would feel left out to some extent. Some extent? Yes. You wouldn't feel left out totally? I would feel left out. Is providing closed captioning and training and scenarios like a forum, isn't that just the law? Yes, and we're working to make sure that we have the capacity to be able to do that throughout the agency in the buildings and facilities that we operate. So the CDC is breaking the law by not providing closed captioning at this forum? The CDC is, is, doesn't have the capacity at this present in all the lease facilities and um, some of the uh, buildings that we operate in to be able to do that. How long have you been planning for this forum? We've been planning for this forum, Annie, for the past three or four months over the summer. One of the things that I committed to was to ensure that we do a better job of being able to reach more people and train them on the issues that you're describing that are critical to us becoming a model EEO program. And so we hope to be able to use this as a blueprint to hold future forums on an annual basis. We've also invited our uh, peer groups from the Department of Health and Human Services, the other EEO directors to come down and to participate and also use this blueprint to be able to go back to their respective agencies and do the same thing. We feel that it's a blueprint for success and also it's critical to us doing a better job of being able to ensure that people are aware of the criticality of what we do in the office and have access to some of the learning and information. Let me share with you a copy of a web page on your website mm -hmm. listing types of discrimination. Do you see anything missing? Do you see disability discrimination missing under types of discrimination? Yes. I can tell you also that our website is under reconstruction and we're addressing those issues as we speak. If you were a disabled employee and you saw that, what would go through your mind? What do you think they would think? Well, same thing that you referenced earlier in terms of how uh, someone would feel who didn't have closed captioning. Of course I would feel uh, left out, but also I think it's important to reiterate that we are committed uh, to rebuild the website and include uh, as much as possible those issues that may have been omitted. Do you see how all these things adding up make it seem as if the CDC does it really care about disabled employees? I can certainly appreciate that perspective, Andy, but I'm going to go back again to the facts. And the fact remains that when you look at what we do and what we have done in the area of dis disability and reasonable accommodation, we've done more within the last five years that have been, that's been done in the last 10 years. I reference again the amount of money that's been invested to ensure 
that our employees have uh, the equipment that they need to be successful. We've gone out and conducted audits of the facilities on our campuses to ensure that we work with our buildings and facilities people to make improvements on a consistent and an ongoing basis. And we're committed to do that as we move forward even more so than we have in the past. Is it fair that you have a long way to go? It's fair to say that not only do we have a long way to go, but many agencies have a long way to go as well. I meet every month with my HHS EEO director peers and we all face similar challenges. How important is transparency in government? Transparency in government is very important. Why? I think it's important that people have a sense of trust and faith in their leaders and that we do everything we can to share as much information as possible to ensure that people feel confident in what we do. So we requested a copy of a presentation that looked into uh, the outcomes of EEO complaints, how they feel uh, they were impacted after filing a complaint. This is what we got, and I want to just show you because 18 pages are missing uh, in that. Is that transparent to you? I think when you ask for reports that are related to uh, EEO information, we have to be very mindful and careful of the information that we release to ensure that we main pri maintain privacy and confidentiality. This is a this now, is a request. study that was presented at a conference, a public conference, and you're not allowing us to see it. What are you hiding? What I'm there's nothing that we're hiding, Andy. Then why not give it to us? Because we have to make sure that number one, CDC protects the privacy of information that is in some reports. Some information that's included in reports is not necessarily available to the public and that the best way to handle concerns about information uh, that you have not received, as you know, Andy, is to go through the FOIA process with our media relations office. I can't speak to the information that's been redacted. Tell me if you can hear this. I just want you to listen to two minutes of this mm -hmm. briefly. This is a, an employee and a supervisor talking. Mm -hmm. The employee has postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to hear what the supervisor tells her. You can take this how you want to take it. Alicia does not believe that you have postpartum depression. Okay. No one up here believes you have postpartum depression. And I don't know if you do or don't. You know, but I don't. Mm -hmm. It's the three days of retail work. You know that. If you had a mental illness and you heard that, how would you feel? Well, if, if I was an employee and I heard that response, of course I would feel um, left out and also very disappointed and hurt. Is that discrimination? I can't speak to as to whether or not that is discrimination because I don't have the full context of the entire uh, conversation. But at the end of the day, I think it's important for you to know and for your viewers to know that discrimination is not tolerated here at CDC and that there are avenues for employees to be able to bring these concerns to management's attention so that they can be dealt with swiftly and effectively. That employee who has postpartum depression, uh, a short time after making that recording, after asking for reasonable accommodations, uh, was fired. She filed a discrimination complaint. Can you tell me that you're going to investigate her claims? I can tell you that if an employee files a uh, claim particularly this employee, if they come to our office and they file a claim, we absolutely will hold ourselves accountable to the rigorous standards that I've outlined to ensure that it's corrected. Part of that diversity and inclusion study 2015-2016 said that a uh, group survey respondents said that bias and harassment continue to be an issue. What do you have to say to that? I would say that in the... Um, field of uh, equal employment opportunity in general, when you look at the studies that have been done by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, not just now, but going dating back as far as 2010 and beyond, bias, unconscious bias in particular, continues to be the number one issue when it comes to uh, discrimination in the workplace. That is why, again, when you go back to look how our office has responded to these types of issues, the number one issue time and time again has been identified that you must train, you must make employees uh, and managers aware, and also you have a responsibility to ensure that the EEO processes in your office are adhered to and the rigorous standards that we hold ourselves accountable to are highly regulated. And you go back and look how we've done that over the past five years. I think we've done an exceptional job of, of not only holding ourselves accountable to the rigors 
and the regulations that the commission holds us, holds us accountable to. But I myself personally have put training and awareness, in particular unconscious bias, as the number one training issue for us in this agency. I personally have gone out the past year or so and conducted unconscious bias training with senior leaders and, and groups and, and that I mentor. And I'm continuing to do that. As a matter of fact, if you look at the agenda form that you have, you'll see that I'm on the agenda for an hour and a half with leaders and employees across the agency dealing with this very issue that is prevalent, not just within CDC, but both in the public and the private sector and across all sectors of employment. 